Hello everyone, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Queen Rahman. I want to share with you today some awesome news of my country. The president, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, has efforts to as part of the efforts to combat the coronavirus pandemic, has decided, along with some members of parliament, to donate three months of their salaries in order to help combat the coronavirus situation this I, I i comment this effort i say is a very good one it's a good step in the right direction and i urge all others to do same let's take a listen to it and hear what he had to say thank you i'm announcing tonight the establishment of a covid 19 fund to be managed by an independent board of trustees and chaired by former Chief Justice Sophia Akufu to receive contributions and donations from the public to assist in the welfare of the needy and the vulnerable. I've directed the Controller General to pay my next three months' salary, i.e. April, May and June, into this fund. Let me also thank, from the bottom of my heart, the churches, financial institutions and individuals who have already made donations to help in this fight. God richly bless them. One more person who has pledged her three months salary is the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Ayawaso West Wagon constituency, who is in the person of Lydia Al Hassan Seiram. She has also pledged her three months salary for the combat of the COVID-19 pandemic. Finally, also one member of parliament who has also pledged to pay his salary into the COVID-19 fund is the Honorable Member of Parliament for Lejokuku, my favorite MP, Honorable Oko Boy, Dr. Oko Boy. He may have pledged it on a lighter note, uh, on uh, CTTV's uh, The Big Issue, but we are going to follow through to make sure he actually did, uh, he actually does what he said he was going to do. And actually he was, he, he was honest and he said he wasn't going to pledge three months salary like everyone else, but actually he was just going to uh, give away one month salary. We are going to follow through and make sure he does that. Thank you everyone for watching.
Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. I've come to your homes once again, as promised, on the matter which continues to grip not only the attention of the nation, but also of the entire world, the coronavirus pandemic. At the time of my last broadcast, some six days ago, Ghana had recorded 21 confirmed cases of infections, with virtually all the cases being imported. I took the step to close all our borders, and I ordered a mandatory quarantine and testing of all the 1,030 persons who arrived at the airport at the time of the announcement till the day the borders were closed. Indeed, 78 of the persons put under quarantine have since tested positive for the virus. It is these additional confirmations that have increased dramatically our total number of cases to 137. Indeed, 97% of all confirmed cases are travelers who brought the disease from outside our shores. Of the remaining 59 confirmed cases, 53 are receiving treatment and are doing well, and they will be discharged should their second test results prove negative. 14 of them are being managed at home in self-isolation. Four persons who were tested positive for the virus, but were aged and had other serious underlying medical conditions, have lost their lives. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Thankfully, two persons have made full recoveries. Fellow Ghanaians, the oath of office I swore on 7th January 2017 demands that I dedicate myself to the service and well-being of you, the Ghanaian people. It is my job to protect you, and I'm determined to do just that. As I have said before, all the government is doing is intended to achieve five key objectives. Limit and stop the importation of the virus, contain its spread, provide adequate care for the sick, limit the impact of the virus on social and economic life, and inspire the expansion of our domestic capability and deepen our self-reliance. Thus far, we have succeeded in halting any more importations of the virus into our country. And I thank the overwhelming majority of you for adhering to the good hygiene and social distancing protocols announced in my first broadcast to you. However, prevailing circumstances mean the stricter measures have to be put in place to contain and halt the spread of the virus within our country, especially in Accra, Tema, Kaswa, and Kumasi, which have been identified by the Ghana Health Service as the hotspots of the infections. In doing this, we cannot afford to copy blindly and do all the things some other world developed countries are doing. There is no one size fits all approach to this pandemic. We have a unique situation in our country and we must take it into account in dealing with the disease. Whilst meeting all the six key WHO guidelines on the most effective ways of combating the pandemic. Even though it may be said that the number of our infections is still relatively low, if we act now purposefully, we have a chance of preventing an escalation of our numbers. So, effective 1 a.m. on Monday, 30th March, some 48 hours from now, I have imposed, pursuant to the powers granted the President of the Republic under the imposition of Restrictions Act, 2020 Act 1012. Restrictions on movement of persons in the Great Accra metropolitan area, Gama, which includes Awutu Senya East Municipality, and the Greater Kumasi Metropolitan Area and contiguous districts for a period of two weeks subject to review. 
It'll give us the opportunity to try to hold the spread of the virus and scale up effectively contact tracing of persons who have come into contact with infected persons, test them for the virus, and if necessary, quarantine and isolate them for treatment should they prove to have the virus. In Greater Accra, the following areas will be affected. Accra Metropolis, Tema Metropolis, Tema West Municipality, Lejokuku Municipality, Crowell Municipality, Adenta Municipality, Asiamai Municipality, La Nkwantanai Medina Municipality, La Dadekotokmo Municipality, Okakwe North Municipality, Ablikuma North Municipality, Ablikuma West Municipality, Ablikuma Central Municipality, Ayawasu East Municipality, Ayawasu North Municipality, Ayawasu West Municipality, Ayawasu Central Municipality, Ga West Municipality, Ga North Municipality, Ga Central Municipality, Ga South Municipality, Ga East Municipality, Kole Klote Municipality, Wejagbawe Municipality, Pong Katamansu Municipality, and the Wutusenya East Municipality. In the Greater Kumasi Metropolitan Area and contiguous districts, the following areas are affected. Kumasi Metropolis, Asukwa Municipality, Swami Municipality, Old Tafu Municipality, Ufurikro Municipality, Asokore Mampo Municipality, Kwadaso Municipality, Echiman Webieja Municipality, Kwabri East Municipality, Ejesu Municipality, Efija Kwabre South District, Bosomche District, Echima Kwanwoma District, and Echima Webiaja North District. This, in essence, means that everyone resident in these areas must stay at home for the next two weeks. However, if you must go out, it must only be to get essential items such as food, medicine, water, undertake banking transactions, or to use public toilet facilities. But as much as possible, stay at home. There shall be during this period no intercity movement of vehicles and aircrafts for private or commercial purposes for the areas of the restrictive measures, except for vehicles and aircrafts providing essential services and those carrying cargo. Riders of motorbikes in, are not allowed to carry any additional person. And all intracity passenger vehicles, such as trotros and taxis, must reduce the number of passengers in order to observe appropriate social distancing and hygiene protocols. Additionally, all commercial vehicle stations shall observe appropriate hygiene protocols and social distancing. The Ministry of Transport has engaged the transport operators and unions in this regard. The Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development has also engaged with the Metropolitan Municipal and District Assemblies and the leaders of the market associations in the country to make satisfactory arrangements about the operations of the markets that ensure observance of social distancing and enhanced hygiene protocols. In any event, only persons involved in the food value chain can operate in the markets during this period. Individuals and institutions providing the following services shall be exempted from the restrictions. Members of the executive, legislature, and the judiciary. Production distribution and marketing of food, beverages, pharmaceuticals, medicine, paper, and plastic packages, environmental and sanitation activities, staff of Valco, road and railway construction workers, mining workers, fisher folk, members of the security agencies assigned lawful duties, staff of electricity, water, 
telecommunications, e-commerce, and digital service providers, and staff of fuel stations. Fellow Ghanaians, to accelerate the contact tracing process and ensure we can tail the spread of the virus in the shortest time, we will use the military and police to assist health authorities to expedite the process. We'll also pursue a policy of testing all contacts of people tested positive. The affected areas, and indeed all other regions, have earmarked designated isolation and treatment centers for the management of suspected and confirmed cases, as well as the selection of facilities for mandatory quarantine is being carried out. An intensive public health education and community awareness on social distancing and hand washing will be carried out. It is very important that we protect all health care providers with personal protective equipment to make sure that they do not contract the virus in the process of protecting our lives. Government has therefore taken delivery of additional PPEs and more are being procured. Distribution of 17,000 coveralls, 350,000 masks, 17,000 goggles, 2,400 non-contact thermometers, 350,000 gloves, 25,000 sanitizers, and 30,000 test kits are ongoing for healthcare personnel and those undertaking contact tracing and testing. We're recruiting 1,000 community health workers and an additional 1,000 volunteers to help in this endeavor. 100 pickup vehicles and 2,500 tablets have been mobilized for the exercise. Fellow Ghanaians, I'm urging all of you to bear with these additional measures. They are being done in the interest of all of us. They are hopefully only for a short while. These additional measures, together with those earlier announced, are what will help us defeat the virus. And we must be united in our determination and efforts to overcome this challenge. This certainly is not the time for politicking or the display of partisanship. The virus does not care which party you belong to. Neither is it, as we have seen, a respecter of persons. The enemy is the virus and not each other. As I have stated in my earlier broadcasts, all the measures I have announced tonight will be subject to constant review. Fellow Ghanaians, we are in this together, and the government will stand by you. We are aware that there will be discomfort and difficulties for all of us over the next couple of weeks. As a responsive government, we will continue to implement bold measures to mitigate the impact of the coronavirus on businesses and households and ensure that job losses are minimized. The Minister for Finance has been directed by me to prepare for approval by Parliament a coronavirus alleviation program to address the disruption in economic activities, the hardship of our people, and to rescue and revitalize our industries. He will then immediately make available a minimum of 1 billion CDs to households and businesses, particularly small and medium scale enterprises. The commercial banks are, in addition, Responding to the Bank of Ghana's 1.5% decrease in the policy rate and 2% in reserve requirement with a 3 billion CD facility to support industry, especially in the pharmaceutical, hospitality, service and manufacturing sectors. We're providing additional relief, such as extension of the tax filing date from April to June a 2% reduction of interest rates by banks, effective 1st April 2020, the granting by the banks of a six-month moratorium of principal repayments to entities in the airline and hospitality industries, i.e. hotels, restaurants,
car rentals, food vendors, taxis, and Uber operators. All other sector credit exposures will be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. Mobile money users can send up to 100 CDs for free and 100% to 300% increase in the daily transaction limits for mobile money transactions. Let me also reiterate that the ban on public gatherings, religious or social, is still in force. Anyone, irrespective of status, religion, or ethnicity, who is found to be flouting them will be dealt with fully in accordance with law. The security services have been clothed with the necessary power to enforce these measures, and I assure you they will do so responsibly but without fear or favor, ill will or malice. Fellow Ghanaians, with the Bank of Ghana predicting a worst case GDP growth rate scenario of 2.5% for 2020, should the virus continue to linger for the rest of the year, the effects on our economy would be dire. However, as we have demonstrated over the course of the last three years, where we inherited an economy that was growing at 3.4% and transformed it into one which has grown by an average of 7% over the last three years. I assure you that we know what to do to bring back our economy back to life. What we do not know is how to bring people back to life. We will therefore protect people's lives, then their livelihoods. For the next two weeks, I urge all of you, especially residents in the affected areas of Greater Accra and Greater Kumasi, to be reminded every day that the front line of the fight against coronavirus is your front door. If you cross it, you and your family will likely be infected. So please, stay at home. It is vitally important that each one of us, in all parts of the country, continue to observe the social distancing and enhanced hygiene protocols, for they are the weapons of our defense against the virus. I'm announcing tonight the establishment of a COVID-19 fund to be managed by an independent board of trustees and chaired by former Chief Justice Sophia Akufu to receive contributions and donations from the public to assist in the welfare of the needy and the vulnerable. I've directed the Controller General to pay my next three months' salary, i.e. April, May, and June, into this fund. Let me also thank, from the bottom of my heart, the churches, financial institutions, and individuals who have already made donations to help in this fight. God richly bless them. We can defeat this virus if we all commit ourselves to respecting all the measures that have been outlined. I'm confident the Ghanaians will comply with them and the security services will not have to intervene with extraordinary means to enforce them. The love of country is deeply embedded in all of us and I assure you that the security forces will conduct themselves with the necessary professionalism. Mr. Ramu, in some of my king, in Yina Yam Bomoding, me in Disu, and Copa Daroma, a bad boy, me in Panyafi, San Enemy, your fan, your boar modding, me in Yelo, your modromo, a bawawa fan. We have prayed to Almighty God to heal our land, and I know that by the grace of God, he has heard our cry. Nonetheless, each one of us must do his or her part. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Good night.